There's a new category that's been established called a high-grade B-cell lymphoma with MYC and BCL2 translocations. This is the so-called double hit category, and it has its own category, which means that these patients are no longer categorized as diffuse large B-cell lymphoma. And I think it's going to be very helpful in clinical trials moving forward. The practical implications of this change are that it's really expected that patients be evaluated for both cell of origin and MYC and BCL2 protein and uh, translocation status at diagnosis. And that's something that's not been done routinely in the United States and really starts to need to be done routinely. So the short answer on how to treat double hit lymphoma is that we don't know. Uh, what we know is that with standard RCHOP treatment, which has historically been the treatment used for diffuse large B-cell lymphoma, these patients have a significantly inferior outcome. There are no randomized trials that guide us on what's better, but retrospective studies suggest that more aggressive approaches, such as the dose-adjusted R EPOC regimen, the hyper-CVAD regimen, and the codox MIVAC regimen may confer improved outcome. Those studies may be subject to some selection bias, however. In my practice, outside of clinical trials, I use the dose-adjusted R-EPOC regimen for most of these patients. Burkitt lymphoma has enjoyed really excellent outcomes for the last 20 years when patients are treated with appropriately aggressive regimens. I think what we've learned is that many regimens can be utilized that confer a very favorable outcome and that um, some of the most aggressive regimens may not be necessary for many patients with Burkitt lymphoma. The other new piece of data is that we finally have a randomized trial that suggests that the addition of rituximab is really very important and improves overall survival. Most patients with diffuse large B-cell lymphoma should have a determination of cell of origin, meaning um, usually an immunohistochemistry surrogate, like the Hans criteria, for example. And then the majority of patients should be assessed for MYC and BCL2 by immunohistochemistry. If those are positive, many labs would then reflex to add FISH testing to determine whether a translocation is present. Uh, the other rationale that can be given is that if MYC is positive and BCL2 is positive and the patient has germinal center disease, those are the patients at the highest risk for true double hit status, and they really definitely need the translocation testing.